Hi everyone. We are starting a very important part of spectroscopy, vibrational spectroscopy or infrared spectroscopy. Vibrational spectroscopy deals with vibration of atoms in a molecule above the mean position by absorbing infrared radiation. Vibrational spectroscopy has become one of the key techniques to characterize the structure of matter at the molecular scale. In addition to that, vibrational transition depend on the chemical composition and bonding arrangement of material. Therefore, vibrational spectra can be considered as a material's molecular fingerprint. In this lecture, First, we will start from a simple diatomic vibrator and its vibrational spectrum. Then we shall deal with more practical cases of a diatomic molecule undergoing vibration and rotation simultaneously and finally will extend to polyatomic molecules. Let us start our lecture with a diatomic vibrator. A diatomic vibrating molecule can be considered as a simple harmonic oscillator model. What is a simple harmonic oscillator? You are familiar with the oscillation of a simple pendulum. When displaced from its equilibrium position, it experiences a restoring force which is proportional to the displacement. A diatomic molecule at low temperature can move harmonically. What happens when a diatomic molecule vibrates? Compressing the atoms more closely together will cause the repulsive forces to rise rapidly while pulling them apart is resisted by the attractive forces. That is, any attempt to distort the bond length, that is, its mean internuclear distance at which the molecule is very stable leads to increasing energy. Here we are assuming an HCl like molecule undergo simple harmonic oscillation. Here you can see that the chlorine atom is displaced in a lesser amount compared to hydrogen as chlorine is massive compared to hydrogen. Hence, for simplicity, we are assuming that we are fixing the hydro, uh, sorry, chlorine atom in the axis as it is displacing in a lesser amount. It is assumed to be fixed in the axis and we are stretching and compressing the hydrogen atom from its mean position that is its stable bond length. Here stretching and compressing the atom may lead to increase in the energy and we can consider this energy distribution like a parabola that is if we are plotting energy versus internuclear distance, we will get a parabola for simple harmonic oscillator model vibration. That is, if we are stretching the atom, chlorine atom, or oh sorry, hydrogen atom from its mean internuclear distance 
R E Q equilibrium internuclear distance the stretching of atom leads to increase in the energy level in this way and the compression leads to increase in the energy level this in the energy in this way more here it compressing much more extent and will the energy and its energy level its energy increases like a parabola and as you know the compression and extension of a bond may liken to the behavior of a spring and it obeys hooke's law which is f equal to minus k into r minus r e q where f is the restoring force that is the force applying to restore the atom to its equilibrium position and k k is the force constant or it is the bond strength of the it is the measure of bond strength of the molecule here the restoring force is proportional to the displacement that is displacement from the equilibrium internuclear distance by the stretching or compression and it is make equivalent by using the force constant the potential energy of a simple harmonic oscillator model can also be expressed as half k x square where x is the same displacement r minus r e q thus it is considered as purely elastic and an elastic bond like a spring has certain frequency intrinsic vibrational frequency depending on the mass of the system and the and the force constant here i am giving the mass as reduced to mass if it is a single atom or a material like pendulum you can substitute it as m mass as of the that as of that material undergoing the displacement but here for as it is a molecule we have to consider its reduced mass as we have uh, discussed in the microwave spectrum and reduced mass expression is m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 m1 and m2 are the masses of the two atoms in the molecule here the frequency can be expressed 1 by 2 pi root of k by nu hertz frequency in hertz but in spectroscopy we are always dealing in the wave number so in wave numbers the equation can be expressed as nu bar which is nu by c and equal to 1 by 2 pi c that is i am i divide the equation by a c that by which it, it will convert to the centimeter inverse mode 1 by 2 pi c root of k by nu centimeter inverse this is the basis of this equation is the basis of basic of vibrational spectra and this model the simple harmonic model of a vibrating diatomic molecule is a basic model even though only an approximation it forms an excellent starter for the discussion of vibrational spectra here also there is a condition for a molecule to be ir active the vibration of a molecule can interact with radiation only if the molecular vibration involves a change in dipole moment molecule should have a change in dipole moment during vibration that molecule only will be ir active hence homonuclear diatomic molecules like nitrogen hydrogen 
for which they do not have do not possess a dipole moment even at normal position or at vibration also will not give a an ir spectrum heteronuclear molecules and the molecules which can give unsymmetric vibration can be ir active next we have to obtain an expression for vibrational energy levels vibrational energies are quantized and the allowed vibrational energies may be calculated from schrodinger equation and for a simple harmonic oscillator model of the atomic vibrator the energy level expression in wave number is epsilon v equal to v plus half into nu bar centimeter inverse i am uh, coming directly to the equation in the centimeter inverse wave number expression if in joules the wave the vibrational frequency will be in hertz nu and it is 1 by 2 pi root of k by nu since it is in centimeter inverse the vibrational frequency expression will be 1 by 2, 2 pi c root of k by nu and v is the vibrational quantum number which can have value 0 1 2 3 etc then we can come to different energy levels of a diatomic rotator by putting values for the vibrational quantum number when we are giving zero to the energy expression that is epsilon 0 will become 0 plus half new bar centimeter inverse and we will get an expression of half new bar centimeter inverse this indicate that the diatomic molecule can never have zero vibrational energy which is the basic difference between wave mechanical and the classical approach to molecular vibration and this ground state energy is known as the zero point energy of the molecule as we become one we will get 1 plus half into nu bar which is 3 by 2 nu bar for the second energy level it will be 5 by 2 nu bar third energy level what will be the value 3 plus half into nu bar which is 7 by 2 nu bar for the fourth energy level it will be 9 by 2 nu bar etc further schrodinger equation gives a simple selection rule for the vibrational transition and it is delta v equal to plus or minus 1 if plus 1 the transition from lower to the higher level e0 to e1 e1 to e2 etc which is which will give absorption spectrum and it is minus 1 will be 1 to 0 2 to 1 and will be the emission spectrum here we are normally we are recording the absorption spectrum and for the transition from e0 to e1 what will be the difference in energy delta e will be 3 by 2 nu bar minus 1 by 2 nu bar which is nu bar centimeter inverse and for the next transition what will be the value 5 by 2 minus 3 by 2 which is 1 also the nu bar next is also nu bar that is the change in energy delta e become nu bar centimeter inverse for every transition so the vibrational levels are equally spaced and all the transition give rise to same energy change also c 
since the uh, difference between energy level expressed in centimeter inverse it gives directly the wave number of the spectral line the energy difference directly give the wave number or frequency when we divide the wave number by c we'll get the uh, sorry multiply by c we'll get the frequency that is it gives directly the wave number or frequency of the line absorbed or emitted again one more inference from this is that the vibration vibrating molecule will only absorb the radiation of its own vibrational frequency at any energy level which is proportional to the bond strength of the molecule and the mass of the molecular system or next is the absorption spectrum it use it only half a single line since all the transitions give the same frequency or wave number it will give a single line whether the transition will be in for any state level the transition it will be a single line the absorption spectrum will give a single line which is the new bar proportional to the bond strength and mass of the molecule reduced mass of the molecule students by this i concluding the uh, ir spectrum of a diatomic vibrator thank you very much